can't drink mead with a straw. I think that if you drink mead with a straw, Vikings kick down your door and beat the shit out of you. I'm not in the mood for a Viking ass-kicking. Hi, and welcome to Close Enough Podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Jay. Welcome back. I see you've got a drink today, Mike. I do. It's a strawberry blonde. I like strawberry blondes. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, this one you're not going to be a big fan of, though. I'm not a fan of most things. It's uh, it's two ounces of jalapeno tequila, one ounce of lime juice, uh, three quarters an ounce of simple syrup, and a strawberry. I didn't name it. That's I, horrible. Yeah, it's um, it's better than some of the other drinks I've tried. I got, but this one's. Uh, do you think I don't you really... can make this with the uh, with the habanero vodka. Mm, I don't know. Probably wouldn't surprise me. Be a little spicier. You know, I think I what would be good here if you actually did. I don't know some strawberry syrup in it or something. Some strawberry liqueur I think would make it a little better. But I found this, and I don't really do tequila, so... Hey, you see, you see when you said this, you're like, oh, I got a strawberry blonde. I was like, oh, right on. That's going to be like, you know, Bailey's Irish cream and like strawberry vodka. I'm like, I can get behind that. Yeah. No. Wow, maybe... that, that went a complete unexpected other direction. I'm going to have to like redo this recipe somehow and, and, and maybe make it, I don't know, good. good. <laughs> so, Jay, uh, what are you thinking? Well, Mike, uh, it's been a it's been a week. Yeah. It's just been a weird, 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 weird week. I generally, generally try to stay out of politics, but uh, something happened in California this week, and a ballot initiative. And I, I've actually got the initiative up here on my screen. I, I just want to read it to you. And just stop me at any time, because I'm, I'm just going to read the whole thing. And you just stop me when it pisses you off. This is a ballot initiative. This is a ballot initiative. Uh, in California, uh, anybody can put forth a ballot initiative. It's 200 bucks. Okay. And they write it up, and they're like, here you go, here's what I think we should get on the ballot. Uh, the Attorney General has to approve it and write it up as a, as, as a ballot initiative, as a, as a legal document. And then the issuer has to get uh, 365,880 signatures. Okay. If they can get those signatures, it goes to a vote. So here's this guy, Matt McLaughlin. Propose Mc McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Any relation to Sarah? No. I have absolutely no idea. All right. Continue. I, judging by the initiative, I doubt it. Okay. But, yeah. So this is the Sodomite Suppression Act. <laughs> okay. Give it up already. I know. I'm enjoying <laughs> that so far. Uh, and the next thing is penal code. Sweet. <laughs> uh, penal code section 39A: the abominable crime against nature known as buggery called also sodomy, is a monstrous evil that Almighty God, giver of freedom and liberty, commands us to suppress on pain of our utter destruction, even as he overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Ballot initiative. Okay. <laughs> Seeing that it is better that offenders should die, rather than all of us should be killed by God's just wrath against us for the folly of tolerating wickedness in our midst, the people of California wisely command, in the fear of God, that any person who willingly touches another person of the same gender for purpose of sexual gratification be put to death, by bullets to the head, or by any other convenient method. Section C. This is in California. This is California. And you're telling me, just so far from what you're, this person has already gotten those signatures? This or? person's at the si signature gathering stage. Okay. So, uh, Shall I go on? Yes, please. Okay. Section C. No person shall distribute, perform, or transmit sodomistic propaganda directly or indirectly by any means to any person under the age of majority. Sodomistic propaganda is defined as anything aimed at creating an interest in or acceptance of human sexual relations other than between man and a woman. Every offender shall be fined one million per occurrence, and or imprisoned up to ten years, and or expelled from the boundaries of the state of California for up to life. So, so is he, this person, um, I don't know, saying that a man and a woman can't, well, or won't have sodomy? Or is it just saying that it's because of man and man is mandatory for that? I don't think it specifies, uh, uh you're, you're talking about uh, heterosexual anal. Yeah. Yes. I don't think he specifies it. As far as I'm concerned, anybody who's writing this law is probably a missionary-only kind of person. Yeah. But uh, it doesn't specify. Specifically, it's homosexual acts. Or the acceptance. Or, oh. or Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Continue. California, mind you. <laughs> Good old liberal California. <laughs> Section D. No person shall serve in any public office, nor serve in public employment, nor enjoy any public benefit who is a sodomite 
or who espouses sodomistic propaganda, or belongs to any group that does. <laughs> so you can't do anything in public if you're gay. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Section E. This law is effective immediately, and shall not be rendered ineffective nor invalidated by any court, state or federal, until heard by a quorum of the Supreme Court of California, consisting only of judges who are neither sodomites nor subject to disqualification hereunder. Which I think is fantastic, because it's like anybody who doesn't agree with me doesn't have the power to strike this down. Yeah, this is a smart way in writing that, I guess. A little bit of uh, self-fulfilling prophecy in there. Section F. The state has an affirmative duty to defend and enforce this law as written, and every member of the public has standing to seek its enforcement and obtain reimbursement for all costs and attorney's fees in so doing. And further, should the state persist in inaction over one year after due notice, the general public is empowered and deputized to execute all of the provisions hereunder extrajudiciously, mm. immune from any charges and indemnified by the state against any and all liability. Section G. Oh my god, it keeps going. It keeps... Yeah, this is the last one, don't worry. <clears throat> Section G. This law shall be known as the Sodomite Suppression Act, and be numbered as Section 39 in Title Three of the Penal Code. Hee hee hee, penal. <laughs> Pertaining to offenses against the sovereignty of the state. The text shall be predominantly posted in every public school classroom. All laws in conflict with this law, to that extent, are invalid. Jesus Christ. Not right, a first... joke. Didn't make this up. This is a real thing that's happening right now. First thing I'm going to say, it's California. Are you kidding me? You can't get any more left of a state than California. Why? Oh, sh shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of down, but still. <laughs> you, you know where I was going with that. I know. They turned uh, the country on its side, and everything loose ended up in California. It... <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. It, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, San Francisco? <laughs> Just, I don't have to say anything I know else. what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> Just that city alone. It's the granola state. It's fruits, nuts, and flakes. Yeah. But, yeah, no, this is a real thing. Does it specify whether or not uh, there's anything that, that's backing this man up from, from a church? Or is this just a person doing it himself? Uh, this is He's an attorney. This is an attorney? Of course, yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, there's been some some moves to try and get him disbarred, which, unfortunately... That can't happen. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, California State uh, only disciplines attorneys for acts of moral turpitude, uh, usually in relation to their work or clients, not their protected free speech activities. So he'll probably keep his license. But, yeah, for me, it's going to be one of two things. One, this guy's serious. In which case, he's actually advocating that we round up and murder homosexuals publicly, not privately. Like, wow, I should make a big closet and make them all stand in it. No, he's like, eh, you should kill him. And if the state doesn't kill him, you should be allowed to lynch him. It's where I was, yeah. That's... Yes. Which is appalling. <laughs> it's absolutely fucking appalling. Option B, well. Uh, by the way, did you hear that uh, Utah has reinstated the firing squad? That's great, actually. Yeah. It's way cheaper. I had changed topic there, but yeah, uh, I just heard that today that Utah has uh, raised to do the firing squad. I, I saw that. I, saw I wonder that. if that's heard that with all like, the, the trouble they've been having with lethal injection. What, too expensive? I saw a, uh, a headline, uh, man dies after botched execution attempt. <laughs> what? Uh, it sounds like it worked then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> now back on topic, okay. Yeah, the option B is that the guy is... I mean, we're in Poe's Law territory. You familiar with Poe's Law? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for those of you that aren't, Poe's Law basically states that uh, once you get to the extremes of an opinion, satire is indistinguishable from fact. So I I'm wondering if this guy is not just being a total twat. Because it's 200 bucks to file this, and he's a lawyer. 200 bucks ain't shit to a lawyer. Well, he's sitting down and took the time to write all that out. A couple things that I noticed. One I kind of said already... Everything in that bill, or in that, uh, uh, what is it called again? The uh, ballot initiative. Ballot, yeah, okay. Initiative. Everything in there is only against man on man. Uh, I believe uh, female on female as well. I didn't uh, hear anything that, that the, specified the, the language female was uh, same sex for purpose of uh, a person willingly touches another person of the same gender for purposes of sexual gratification. So, oh, okay. Yes, it's lawyer speak. It's it's covered. Yeah. It's actually it's actually quite well covered. It's just, he continuously refers to sodomy and sodomites and 
I like buggery. Buggery. Right up in the first sentence. Buggery. Yeah. The abominable crime against nature known as buggery. Who the fuck I, says buggery? I was going to say, I don't even think I've ever heard that before. I've heard it before. Just have you? Not in the States. Buggery. Buggery. Yeah, i got to remember that one. I'm yeah, going to use that at work. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> so, so, I mean, there's the entire possibility that he's paying the 200 bucks to get this initiative in. Then he's going to go around and gather signatures. And then he's going to end up with a white pages of bigots. So just over, a list over, of all the people who think this is a good idea. Over 300,000, right? In the state of California? Yeah. No, I mean, there's a lot of people in California. Yes. Um, you think there's that many in California that live in California by choice that would agree with this? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure if you came over here to, um, I don't know, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. You could find it. Absolutely. He'd be fine. But California, I think he's barking up the wrong tree in the wrong state. Now, this has to go forward. The attorney general can't stop this. They're not allowed to. They're specifically not allowed to stop ballot initiatives um, to get them to the point where they can gather signatures. Uh, the reason they're not allowed to do that is to keep uh, very partisan attorneys from just knocking down things they don't agree with, you know, just at the first step. Say we had a, the situation was reversed, and say you had a very anti-gay government, and some guy popped up, and he was like, hey, maybe we should treat these law-abiding, law-abiding American citizens like equal people. Huh? How about that? And the guy'd be like, no. Yeah. So the attorney general is not allowed to do anything. So this will go forward to the signature gathering state, and that's kind of scary. So you know, I, 2015, man. Don't you think we'd be getting over this shit? I think we are. I really do. I think it's finally getting to the point. I mean, you know, uh, um, how gay marriage is legal in Florida now? For now. I but mean, people are trying to fight it, but they're on the wrong side of history. It's that's exactly what I'm saying. It's been a long, long fight. And, you know, people are. Or have always been like so ashamed to come out of the closet or to, to show who they are. Nowadays, are you kidding me, dude? Besides San Francisco, we've got right here in Florida, the Key West, <laughs> covered in gay pride parades all the time. Yeah, it's. Yeah. And then I mean, no, I remember when, when I moved to Florida, I was fourteen or fifteen. I'm from New England. New England's a small place. I'm from a fairly small town. I remember meeting the first person that I knew was gay. I remember the moment I found out. The guy's name was Mike. Not me. Hmm. Uh, guy's name was Mike. I went to school with him. After friends with him for a couple of months, we were sitting at a table, and he just casually mentioned uh, uh, he was going to see his boyfriend after school. And I was like, you know, I'm just not along. I'm like, okay, okay. And in my mind, alarm bells went off. <gasps> oh my God, he's gay! And I started, you know, going down the the stereotype checklist. You know, nicely groomed, well dressed, talks with a bit of a lisp. Uh, has one of those ski slope haircuts, wearing sandals. Yeah, it's so obvious now. You know, I started freaking out. I'm like, oh my god, he's gay. You're sitting at a table with a gay man. And then another part of my brain went, dude, you liked him yesterday, right? Yeah. He was gay yesterday. Yeah. You didn't care yesterday. No. Then you don't care today. Okay. And that was it. It was never an issue from that point on. It never really bothered me. I mean, I grew up in the in the church, as I've said a hundred times before. So it was always it was always frowned upon, so to speak. What gets me sometimes is my mom still to this day she'll be like, "Oh, I met so and so's son. It's such a shame because he's such a handsome, good-looking young fella. He has a lot going for him. The ladies would love him, but he's gay." I'm like, "Okay, so? good for him." Yeah, but that's so sad. Why is it sad, mom? He's it happy. Sad. It's sad it, that your mom's in the a word bigot. you're using to describe it means he's fucking happy. <laughs> why is he t- why is this sad? Uh there was I forget what, but I remember there was a TV show that my mom wouldn't watch because one of the main actors in it came out of the closet and was gay. How I met your mother? Maybe. Might have been. But then the weird thing is is she watches uh Big Bang Theory where <laughs> the main guy in it that plays Sheldon has come out of the closet and is gay. So huh? explain that one to me. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, he came out last year sometime. I, I, just, I just found out Emerson Cooper was gay, and I was like, huh. Emerson Cooper is... He's a newscaster. Oh. It's another one of those, yeah, okay. Yeah, it doesn't... I don't I, think and it last year when Ellen Page came out of the closet, and I got the... That was the, depressing. The consolidation letters from the friends. They're like, oh, too bad, Jay. Yeah, because that's the reason. That she's not gonna... Yeah, that's yeah. the reason I'm not hooking up with Ellen Page, is because she's gay. Yeah. There's nothing to do with the fact that I'm me, and... She's Ellen Page, but mm-hmm. now it's because she's gay. I, I think you and, um, I don't know, probably somewhere around 500,000 other guys in the country all just 
had the worst depression and the same time the biggest heart on. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> See? I'll exactly. drink to that. <laughs> it's like, damn it, she's gay. Wait a minute. That means like she's with other Oh, Ooh. oh. <laughs> No, but uh like you said before, it's two thousand fifteen. It's time we get past this. It really is, man. There's no reason that a law-abiding American citizen should be denied any rights at all. And that's the bottom line. This week's Close Enough podcast is brought to you by Clockwork Garage. Clocks, keychains, and more made from recycled auto parts. Visit a clockworkgarage.com. Mike. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. Hey, Mike. 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 It's movie review time. Movie review. What? Did you say movie review? Speak up. I can't hear you. Talking to the microphone. Great White Buffalo. Hey, Yabber Dasher. Can you fix that? We can't hear Mike. Great White Buffalo. Turn him back down. Movie review time. Oh, oh, I got the words mixed up. Sorry. Yes, movie review time. I, that's exciting. I'm excited. Oh, you look it. Yeah. You certainly look it. <laughs> this week, we watched The Angriest Man in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yes, we did. If you haven't watched The Angriest Man in Brooklyn, for fuck's sake, people, we give you a week's lead-in. You know what's coming. Pause the thing, watch it now, come back, because we're going to spoil it. Yeah. The Angriest yeah. Man in Brooklyn follows... Let me get on the right screen. I'm never on the right screen. I'm a little nervous about this review. Don't be. <clears throat> the Angriest Man in Brooklyn follows Henry Altman, a very, very angry individual, as he finds out that he's got a brain aneurysm and is given 90 minutes to live. What would you do with 90 minutes? Altman sets out to try and repair his damaged relationship with his wife and son. What did you think of this movie, Mike? And that's why I'm nervous about this review. <laughs> It's I, I'm really torn with this one, um, because as, as you know, I'm I'm one of the biggest Robin Williams fans ever. I, I love pretty much everything he does and has done. This one, on the other hand, I liked his performance. I I actually enjoyed Mila Kunis's character mm -hmm. and Dinklage. It was the first time I think I ever saw him in something where he wasn't acting like a, a weirdo or or kind of outlandish character. He was Agreed. a normal person. Presenting midgets as though they're people. That's not what I meant. <laughs> okay, well, okay, have you seen the movie Elf? Uh, no. He was in the movie Elf, and he was a very angry little man in the movie Elf. Uh, he's in Game of Thrones, like that. Uh, what's the one we just reviewed uh, oh. with the role-playing? Um, Knights of Bad Astum. Knights of Bad Astum. Astum. I'm going to have to find that picture now, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, his characters, he's always got a unique persona to him. everything yeah, he, he was, plays and anything he was I've seen. pretty straight up and down in this one. This one, exactly, that's what I'm saying. He was, he acted like a normal, I'd just never seen that with him. Well, maybe he um, wasn't, he was just standing next to Robin Williams, so he seemed normal by example, by, by comparison. <laughs> um, maybe. Uh, my, my whole thought on the movie itself, man, it was, uh, it was a little sad. It was a little, um, but I... I I don't know what the right word is, but I can definitely say that I know the anger he feels because I feel like that every time I'm in fucking traffic, every time I look at idiots somewhere. I mean, I, I sit there, especially when I'm by myself in my car, I'm sitting there like, I'm going to give myself an aneurysm one of these days. Mm -hmm. That's just mm -hmm. how I am. So I was able to, to relate to the, that, oh, that aggression. I, I, yes. yes. Very I much did. so. I, I sat in there and he's ticking off things he's like, oh, I hate this and that and that. I think there were really like two or three things on that list that I didn't hate. Yeah, most of that list I agreed with. Oh. It was, it was, uh, um, I mean, dude, I do it at work. I walk off by myself, I'm like, God damn, I'm fucking idiots. Why do I work with so many goddamn idiots? I don't <laughs> want to hear it. You've, you worked. Yeah. Where I work. I now. did. You know what happens. I know what happens there. I, but that's the problem. I mean, anywhere I I've go. I've been there almost 10 years. I, I still catch, yeah, but the, the, the difference is, is that you still have to deal with the customers and the employees. I luckily just have to deal with employees where I'm at. But I do. I, I catch myself doing that all the time. On a quick aside, if anybody is hiring, I'll pretty much do anything. I'll test rectal thermometers if I have to, as long as there's no customer service involved. So if anybody's hiring, anybody, anybody, uh, contact me. Uh, that's J, uh, close enough radio at gmail.com. We, we, we can't even get them to give us movie suggestions and band info. You think they're going to contact you about a job? It's worth a shot. I hate my job is what I'm getting down to. You have something for a shot? Yeah. What do you have? I got mead. I don't want mead. I got rum and no coke. Oh, I'll pass. I'm good. Uh, anyways, back to the movie. What What's did that? You, you want to be shot? <laughs> what did you think? 
well, much like the interview, I had to divorce it from the situation around it and judge it on its own merits. I had to ignore the fact that Altman lived from 51 to 14, Williams 51 to 14, and that this was one of his last major roles. I think mm-hmm. there's three other films coming, uh, that, or that came after this one, uh, once in post-production now, one uh, voice parts. Yeah, I saw there's like one other one that's not. This is the last Robin Williams film. Mm-hmm. And that's sad. It's very sad. Especially that it was such a crappy movie he finished out on. Actually, uh, night the the newest Night at the Museum was released. Uh, release date was like a month after this. Yeah, but it wasn't a Robin Williams film. It wasn't. He just like he was Theodore Roosevelt in it. Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen it. I don't know how much of a role he really has in it. Whether he's. Uh... Well, I haven't seen the new one. I've just seen the original, the uh, first two. Yeah, well, I've only seen the first one. No. Uh, as far as I know, he showed up and was like, oh, there's Robin Williams, har, 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 and then he was gone. It wasn't a Robin Williams film, it was a Ben Stiller film. Yes, that's true. Yeah, this this was a headliner, and he's in one, he's doing, uh, he does a voice part in one, and there's one in post-production now, I don't know what he's doing in that, but, you know, like I said, much as with the interview, I had to divorce this from the situations around it and just review the movie on its own merits, mm-hmm. and I thought it was weak. I don't think Robin Williams was convincing as an angry enough man. I thought he was shouty. I didn't think he was... I don't think he pulled it off. You think he played more of a loud, obnoxious person as opposed to somebody that's actually angry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought he was a cunt. I can see that. You know, about ten minutes into the movie, I added him to the list of things I hated. (laughs) Now, I understand the frustration. Like, for instance, in the beginning, he's in the doctor's office, and he's waiting, and he's waiting, and it's uncomfortable in the waiting room, and a lot of people around. And then he goes in there, and then he's waiting even longer. Mm. And then she comes in... Little overreaction there, but yeah. I I understand that feeling. Like I've I've had that actually happen to me before in the doctor's office. Not so much in the waiting room, but then I ended up going in the room, and I was there for like two and a half hours before a doctor showed up one time. And I'm just sitting here like, okay, you know, you could just left me in the waiting room where there's at least a fucking TV or something. Yeah. Like, why why am I sitting in this room? Doctor comes in, and if we're, of course they're like, hey, how you doing today? And I'm just like, great. Keep my mouth shut, but of course in the back of my mind I'm going, what the fuck took you so long? Yeah. Um, so I get that, but he definitely went over the top with that reaction. There's a few of them. I agree. Now, do you think his wife was actually cheating on him? Or did she just say that yes. to piss him off? Yes, I do. She was cheating on him? Yes. Okay. I, I think I, so. I based well. that on, on the fact that the dude was still there at the end of the movie. Good point. Yeah, no, I I, I kind of thought that she was as well. I just wasn't, they didn't specify because as soon as that happened, she's like, no, I really wasn't. I'm sorry. It doesn't mean anything on the phone when she's trying to call him. I was like, maybe she's just trying to piss him off. And then, just like you said, he was there at the end of the movie. I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think she was. I don't think that reaction was over-exaggerated at all in that circumstance. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I love that. Why don't you just die? It's your fucking lucky day! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, when he finally, like, encounters her again later, and he just flips out on her again on the bridge, on the Brooklyn Bridge. Not the wife, the doctor. Sorry. Oh, okay, that's why I'm staring at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, no, my mom... <laughs> I don't think he encounters her again. My brain uh, jumps so script. When he runs bit. into Dr. Gill. Yes, when he runs into Mila Kunis okay. again. Yeah, yeah. On the bridge. And he starts flipping out at her the second he sees her. Don't you think maybe in that situation you might want to hear why the hell she chased you across fucking New York City? There's, there's got to be a reason. I don't know. I think at that point, um, I got 90 minutes to live. I don't care what you have to say. Not interested. But he even said he knows that's probably not true. Just seems like he'd get more pissed off. I get pissed off a lot. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's heard the first half of our podcast knows that I get pissed off a lot. There's something every week that makes me angry. So, you know, somebody showed up to bother me. I was like, can't I even kill myself in peace? Please. Can I have a minute? Can there just be one minute in my goddamn life where someone isn't bothering me? So I, I get that. I'll, I'll, I'll admit to another thing. When he jumped off the bridge, I thought to myself, he better not be okay. <laughs> I'm serious. Happy endings pissed me off. Yeah, but he wasn't. He still died. He did die, yes. But then she, she did that run down from the Brooklyn Bridge in 30 seconds and fish his ass out. Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah. I'll give you that one. You know, they, they did play fast and loose with times. Like when they were talking to the cop, and he's like, an hour ago, I got hit by this taxi. You got hit by the taxi on the way to the doctor's, right? Mm-hmm. And then sat in the doctor's office for two hours before getting his, being given his diagnosis. Mm-hmm. That was an hour before that. So that's at least three hours. I 
thought about that as well when he said that. Uh. I noticed that. Now, if you were him, though, in the beginning, in the doctor's office, and you female walks in, you don't know who the hell she is, not your doctor, gives you this news, how would you have reacted? Honestly, probably far better than him. Um, you know, I've been in the doctors before when they come in and they're like, hey, you got a kidney stone. Okay. Yeah, it's about the size of a quarter. Okay. You have to have surgery. Okay. I, I, I do fall into a bit of a of a subservient role in that situation because I'm outside my area of expertise. Right. So I don't I don't get pissed off at, at people who uh, uh, people who handle my food uh, or or people that are, you know, in a position where they can turn around and bitch slap me, you know, like judges or police officers or uh, anybody who's could run tunnel boring machinery up my penis. Uh, these are all people that I try not to piss <laughs> off. So um, understandable. But like she's standing there and wouldn't give him the information. You still think he went way too... I, I agree, he went overboard, but that was the character they were playing. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, in a situation like that, she did play it right. It's, you know, I'm, I'm not allowed to, to diagnose you with stuff like this. I'm not your regular doctor here. Here's this, this is a specialist. This is the guy you need to go talk to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, I understand it's a movie, but she would not have just flipped out and been like, cook your turkey for 90 minutes. <laughs> so. The sun... I'm I'm changing the topic up. That's fine. Uh, the son becomes a dancer. Sure. He uh he took that too far as well in that reaction. No, he I don't st- think so. wanted the son to be part of the law firm. You think he was completely in the wrong with the way he treated? Oh, this? Uh, are, are we talking about the son's reaction or the no his reaction uh, Robin Williams' son? reaction to the son saying, "I don't want to be part of your firm." Mm, yeah, I think he's kind of a twat, but but that's the character. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. If your son wants to go on a different path than the one you've got laid out for him, and you cut him out of your life, uh, yeah, it's a bit. Uh, it's a bit overreacting, but you know I've cut family member out of my life, family members out of my life as well. Um, I just didn't do it on on such the same whim that he did. Yeah, it was, a, it was a process that took eleven years. Yeah, you've you've told me a little bit about that. We'll keep that off the podcast for now. That's fine. One thing that bothered me though is when he pulls out the ragged uh, business the, card. The card at the end. You didn't keep that. You threw that down and walked away. Mm-hmm. I saw it. So yeah, that was one thing that was driving me nuts. As soon as oh, as soon as he got into the cab, did you not know it was the same cab driver? Like it was the the minivan. As soon as it was a van, yeah, I'm like, that's a van. I bet it's the same cab driver. That's the first thing I said too, and then of course they they get up and the guy's just nope, I'm, I'm, capital yellow. That would piss me the fuck. I did off. like uh, oh, that's racist. I don't even know what race you are. <laughs> How could I hate you? <laughs> I have to agree with him on that one. Stop dropping the race card, people. Yes. I don't even Becky. Know. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I hate. I hate all of you. I hope you die. But especially you. <laughs> More than anybody else in your race, I hate you. <laughs> uh, so what, what did you think? Uh, you know, this movie had a. It obviously had a lesson in it. There was there was a bit of mor- a morality play here. The whole "don't hate everything in life, or you'll be miserable." Well, that's not what I. Yeah, I guess. But I'm thinking more along the lines of. Uh, you know, be glad for what you got while you got it. You know, sort of the, you know, don't be a cunt to your family because you're going to die in 90 minutes story. You know, if your kid wants to go do his thing, let him do his thing and love him anyway. And yeah, that's kind of the, what I got out of the film. Yeah, I could see that as the, the more, you know, uh, uh, be grateful for what you have. But... The movie it reminded me of most uh, is Click. Sort of. Uh, how so? I, I kind of see it... where you're going with this. But just in in the in the same thing I just said. Well, click was a was another you know your life is short you know love what you have while well, you got it kind of movie. Okay. Yeah, uh, you're another one with, on a, with, a, with a, a a comedian lead that didn't turn out to be a funny movie and you know instead kind of turned into one of those thinkers and downers and it's like what the fuck am I watching? Hey, at least Terry Crews came up and was able to sing in the car. <laughs> that made well, me laugh. I mean, I did laugh at this movie. There were all kinds of things he said that I could see myself saying. So I, I had my laughs. I cackled through it. it was, there was a few chuckles here and there. Yeah, every once in a while he'd say something. I'm just like, <laughs> James Earl Jones. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Excellent. <laughs> uh, that was great, That by the way, though. The James Earl Jones cameo. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that... Uh... You, you had told me earlier he, he was originally, he had a stutter. Mm-hmm. He did have I, a stutter. I did not know that. Yeah, he, he worked long and hard to train it out of him. The way we are trying long and hard to train out ums and gotta be honest. Mike, I'm looking in your direction. 
Don't pout. <laughs> uh, so, being honest, Mike, uh, what are your final thoughts on this film? Uh, to be honest, <laughs> um, um, my uh, 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 okay, I'm done with that. Yeah, I was actually a little bummed that he didn't die that day. As weird as that sounds, he he yes. lived another eight days. It was yes. like, wow, that took away the whole climax of everything he was trying to do. Mm-hmm. When they were driving in the, in the I guess they're in the taxi, on the way to the hospital, and he's like, I'm just going to close my eyes for a minute. I thought that was going to be it. I thought he was done. Yeah, should have been. And then, I think that's where it should have ended. I agree. And then he lives another eight days. I was like, well, you know, they, they should have done that with his head on Mila Kunis' shoulder in the cab. Have you seen Elysium? No. Never mind. I want this. Never mind, because it's good. I'm not, I'm not going to spoil that one for you. I plan on seeing it. Just oh, it's so yet. good. Um, <laughs> now that you mentioned it, I'm doing it more. Now you're supposed to draw attention to it so you can stop doing it. No, yeah. you're right, though. Uh, if he had died in the van, like, okay, I, I can get he didn't die in, in, the, in the river, because they still need him for the rest of the movie. That would have been a terrible place to end the movie. But he went back, and he danced with his son. And you went, beep! Single tear. No. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. I saw it. She told me. No, I didn't. I don't think she's in no. the room for that part. You, uh, he danced with his son. He made he made the amends. He hugged his son. That was what he was going to do. That was his mission. Mm-hmm. Mission accomplished. He should have died in the van. I think you're absolutely right. As much as I hate to uh, to do this, my my rating is let's see, one out of ten. I mean, it's uh, I love Robin Williams. This movie just it, it definitely I. I agree. Was lacking a bit. I'm I'm going a four. A four. Yeah, that's the lowest rating I've given any movie so far. Oh, that's not true. What was that one that sucked ass that we both hit? Rubber. I think you dragged Rubber all the way down. Oh yeah. But uh, no, a four. Um, I'm in agreement. I think that it fell way short of the promise of what Williams has delivered in the past and what could have been delivered from this film. Uh, I gave it a five because I, I I did laugh through the movie. It had its moments. And there is a message hidden underneath all of the nonsense that is an important message. So I, I went right down the middle with it. It wasn't an awful film. I don't regret having watched it. No, I don't regret having watched it. So I, I say five. Okay. So there you go. That's our opinions on The Angriest Man in Brooklyn. Let us know what you think, whether you agree with us or whether you think we're a couple of idiots. Yeah, I have absolutely no problem with you telling me I'm an idiot. Just... I do it, I think, on every podcast. I'll have to go back and look, but I think on every podcast I refer to you as an idiot at least once. Do you? Maybe. I don't no. know. I don't listen to these things. Anyway, let's drag the uh, Close Enough Trash Can over here and find out what we're watching next week. Objections? Objections? Anybody? No, no. Bring it on over. All right, let's see what we got in here. Uh, This one. Chef. Really? I don't know what that is. I'm excited. I've been wanting to see this movie. Well, good news. We're going to be watching Chef this week. That's that is that's exciting. That, I'm, is that puts me in a good mood. Let's put this right back in the trash can so I can accidentally draw it again next week. In the meantime, head on over to Netflix, queue up Chef, give it a watch, send us a message letting us know what you think of it, and come back here next week to see what we think of it. Now over to Mike to try and get out of doing this week's quiz. Oh, I don't give a shit. I'm not you. Go ahead. Let's, let's do this. Says the guy who tried to take a nap last time. Well, I was tired as shit. Can you use some more water? We can take a pause if you want to go get some water. No, I was hoping you would go get it for me so I can look at the quiz while you're gone. I don't think it would help you, actually. Oh. So the this quiz is called The 92 Minutes of Mr. Bomb. Wait. <clears throat> the 92 it, Minutes of Mr. Bomb. Isn't it an uh, Israeli film that Angriest Man in Brooklyn was based off? Is it? I... Pretty sure that's what I read, yeah. Huh. All right, well. All right, well, let's just err on the side of caution. Uh, all right, this week's quiz is... Uh, did that take more or less than 90 minutes? Okay. Okay. Sure. In this quiz, I'm going to read you a uh, a couple of historical things that happened. Uh, most of them are disasters, not all of them, but you just have to tell me whether they unfolded in more or less than 90 minutes. Okay. So we're talking total duration of the event. So I'm just going to read you a little bit of info on it, and you just have to tell me more or less than 90 minutes. Let me get a notepad here. Keep track of your failing score. So optimistic this motherfucker is. 
There's a... Uh... Yeah, you got a 50-50 shot at it, really. There's 11 questions, because I wasn't paying attention when I was writing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alrighty. So, August 4th, 1966, Charles Whitman set up atop the University of Texas clock tower and began firing randomly into a crowd with a high-powered rifle. 16 people were killed and 32 others were wounded. Whitman was then killed by the police. More, less than 90 minutes. The entire event? The entire event. More. More. It is less. It is 80 minutes, start to finish. Really? 80 minutes. Oh, shit. I would have figured by the time the cops got there, tried to talk him down everything, it would definitely be more. I'm sorry, tried to talk him down? They ran up the stairs and shot him with a shotgun. Yeah. <sighs> they did things differently then. <laughs> Number two. On December 7th, 1941, Imperial Japanese forces launched a sneak attack on American naval forces anchored in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. As a result of this, the United States was drawn into World War II. Did this attack take more or less than 90 minutes? Definitely more. It was, in fact, more. It was two hours, five minutes, which still makes it one of the shortest battles in history. Hmm. Number three. On January 13th, 2012, the Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia capsized off the coast of Giglio Island. Eleven passengers were killed, and 23 are still missing, presumed dead. Did the sinking take more or less than 90 minutes? Oh, that took more. I remember that. That is correct. It took two hours and 20 minutes. For But I don't remember. Did the ship ever completely get submerged? No. I it rolled so. onto its side and hit the ground. And then it just, yeah. That's it was what... in shallow water. I they actually so. righted it and towed it home. It was really neat. <clears throat> Number four. On April 28th, 1988, Aloha Airlines Flight 243 suffered catastrophic failure of its airframe over the Pacific Ocean. The passenger compartment was torn open, causing the death of one of the cabin crew, injuring another 65. Pilot Robert Schornsensheimer was able to successfully land the plane. Did that take more or less than 90 minutes? To land the plane? To land the plane. From the moment of disaster to the landing. I'm going to go with, I'm gonna go with less. Less. Less is correct. It took 13 minutes. Nice. Yeah. And uh, this is was the inspiration of the film Miracle Flight. I never saw it. It's about this. Hmm. Basically, people are on an airplane and the cabin gets ripped open and then they have to land. <clears throat> On September 11, 2001, hijackers flew two passenger jets into the World Trade Center towers. The North Tower, the first to be hit, stood for just over 90 minutes before collapsing. How long did the South Tower stand? More or less than 90 minutes? Less. Less. Less is correct. Stood for 56 minutes. I don't remember the exact time, but I remember being at work and hearing on the radio about it happening. Then we set up a TV in the back room and watched everything off and on with all our phones going off like crazy. How were you at work? What do you mean? I was in school when that happened. I was at work. When 9-11 happened? Yeah. I was an assistant manager at a shoe store. That was 11 o'clock on like a fucking Tuesday. Yeah, I was out of... I was That was after I graduated high school. It was my senior year. I graduated in 2001. Hmm, whatever. What year did you graduate? 2002. Yeah. Well, if 2001 was my senior year, then moving on. That's what I'm saying. I graduated in 2001 before that. Somebody happened. doesn't understand the concept of moving on. Mm -hmm. Moving on means we leave the topic and move back to the quiz. On May 31st, 2001, a team of 76 U.S. Navy SEALs and one dog raided Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden's compound in Pakistan. The raid was successful and bin Laden was killed in more or less than 90 minutes. That was way less. Way less is correct. The raid was slated to take 40 minutes. They did it in 38. Nice. I have no idea how that's pronounced, but okay, here goes. <clears throat> you wrote the question? Yeah, but I didn't write the guy's name. Oh. <laughs> Number seven. On February 28th, 1997, Larry Phillips Jr. and Emil Matasada Serenu botched a robbery of the Bank of America in North Hollywood, California. Upon exiting the bank, they opened fire with automatic AK-47s. In the resulting firefight, approximately 1,750 rounds were fired. Eleven police officers and seven civilians were injured, and both robbers were killed. More or less than 90 minutes for that firefight. Mm. That's one that really could go either way. Um, I'll say less. Less is correct. The event occurred over a 44-minute stretch, while inspiring the film 44 Minutes. I haven't seen that either. That's why I have 11 questions, because I moved one of them, and it's the same question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was weird. <sighs> Idiot. Yeah, I've got the Coast of Concordia again. <laughs> More or less. Okay, so number eight. 
April 20th, 1999, Dylan Claybold and Eric Harris entered their high school in Littleton, Colorado. Mm. The pair opened fire on their classmates, killing 13 and injuring another 21 before committing suicide. More or less than 90 minutes. This is Columbine? Columbine. The, the entire situation. The active shooter situation. Oh, the active shooter. So not just that. Yeah, the entire situation lasted like uh, 72 hours or so. Yeah. As CNN was showing the same person crawling out the window for... <laughs> no, um... Man, uh, that's a tough call. Uh, see, no, it's, it's got to be less. Less? Yeah. In fact, it was 49 minutes. Active shooters. I was going to say, I definitely didn't think they were in there for, for over an hour and a half. Number nine, considered by many to be among the worst things ever to happen to mankind, the film In the Name of the King boasts an impressive 4% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes and has <laughs> received three Razzie Awards. <laughs> you like that, huh? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> the monstrosity that is In the Name of the King, did that take more or less than 90 minutes to occur? Disappointed! <laughs> Uh, I, I I don't remember. I'm going to say more. More is correct. It was 127 minutes long. And number 10. Yuri Gagarin was the first man to orbit the Earth, and the first man in space. He orbited the Earth in the Soviet capsule of Vostok 1. It is still one of the shortest manned space flights ever recorded. More or less than 90 minutes. More? More is correct. 108 minutes. I, I had no idea. That was just a guess. I figured it would have been, like, days. The shortest manned flight? Shortest manned flight. He went up, orbited once, and then landed. In fact, he didn't even land. In how long? 108 minutes. Really? A little over an hour and a half, yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yep. He re-entered, and they didn't even have a way to land the thing. So he actually bailed out and parachuted down. That's cool. And then they just crashed the thing into fucking Siberia. <laughs> Serious? This is the first time anybody ever went into space. I, I didn't know that, though. That was, that was cool. Yeah, the guy was pretty cool. He was a test pilot. Uh, he was later killed testing a jet. In the name of the king, sure as hell felt like it was like four oh, God, hours long like trying to watch that shit. Well, that's what I get for giving you a 50-50 shot at things. You got nine. I haven't done that in a... Wait, I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> you got nine out of ten. That's awesome. That is exciting. The Close Enough Radio Podcast is brought to you by a Clockwork Garage. Clocks, keychains, and more made from recycled auto parts. Visit www.clockworkgarage.com. Our audio technician is Yanis Hoonigan. We want to hear from you. Send your questions, comments, concerns, outright insults, music, and movie suggestions to Close Enough Radio at gmail.com. Or follow us on Facebook at Facebook backslash Close Enough Radio. Now over to Mike for the news. So, you know, it's been a, kind of a slow week in the news. There's still been a few things, but... <clears throat> well, slow weeks are good, aren't they? Not for me. Yeah, well, I mean, I understand we have to entertain people, but... It gives me a lot less to laugh at. You know, if, if nobody puts a, a freaking chicken in the toilet for a week, that's fine. Yeah, I don't know. Horrible, stupid things that happen. It's Florida. Okay. That's not one of your stories, is it? No, no. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> Not yet, anyway. <laughs> You have a chicken in the freezer? You gonna go defrost it in the toilet? <laughs> oh, I love how every year around uh, Thanksgiving, a handful of people are killed when they drop their frozen turkeys into the fryer. Mm-hmm. You can't... That is a fun trick to play on somebody, though, that's new in the kitchen. Stand back and throw an ice cube in the fryer when they're in front of it. Oh, God done that a few times. Oh, God, that's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was at work, and a dude came in, he was looking for a propane regulator because he's frying a turkey in the traditional way. Um, I keep using that word. I, I don't think, think that word means... means what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to go with that. Uh, traditional way. All right, so... What do you got, Mike? Uh, first story here. Florida man falls off balcony after his friends place him outside for snoring too loudly. It's this is nice. nice. Um, this takes us back to... to you remember the, the church story I had from last week with the... No, the, I completely forgot, yeah. The turkey, the twerking, and yeah, the, yes, my, the turkey, the turkey, yeah, the turkey uh, story. Well, this is also in Panama City, Panama City, and uh, <clears throat> also because of spring break, the uh, the friends were there visiting, hanging out, doing their thing, getting drunk, and I guess the guy passed out, and while drunk and passed out, started snoring, so he annoyed everybody else. They carried his ass over to the balcony. At some point in the night, he woke up and walked himself over the railing. 
Like sleepwalking or just stumbling around drunk? They didn't specify. They just say he woke up and fell over the railing. And uh, <laughs> they found his uh, unconscious body in the parking lot of the hotel. Fell two stories in the hospital now with a uh, broken broken neck and spinal injuries, but he's still alive. Oh, well, that's something, I guess. But, I mean, I, I remember getting drunk and wasted with friends, people passing out, someone snoring. I, you, you draw on them. You, you shove something up their nose or I don't know, you know. We used to do the lift. You do the lift? The lift. I don't remember that one. You pick the couch up and slide the end tables underneath it. Never did that one. So when they go to roll out of the couch, they fall like three feet to the ground. <laughs> I've never done that one. That one's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, because it's funny, but at the same time, they'll probably live. Yeah. But uh, I guess, you know, honestly, I'm thinking about it. I can't imagine if, if, if we got fucked up and drunk and you passed out and I dragged your ass on the balcony, I wouldn't think you're going to fall over the, <laughs> the railing. Well, if of there's the a rail, I mean, like, okay, if it's, if it's just like a piece of corrugated metal... Like yeah. bolted to the side and held up with some, you know, clothesline, and they left them on it, then yeah, they might be... No, if it's got railings and it's well-built, I don't see any reason why they would think. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't blame them in this, in this situation. No, uh, but that's, that's the messed up part. I mean, that's the whole thing. This guy's hurt in the hospital now just because he was snoring too loudly. Well, that, and I'm sure the, the, the excessive drinking didn't help much beforehand. <laughs> it probably did, honestly. <laughs> probably yeah, didn't. the alcohol probably helped him relax and probably limited further injuries. Yeah. Which I, is, you know, the unfortunate reason that the drunk driver generally lives through the crash. Mm -hmm. That's generally speaking, yeah. Uh, next one here, I don't have a lot of specifics on this, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, Francis Boucher, son of the Hells Angels leader, Maurice, was accidentally released from jail in Quebec. I'm <laughs> sorry, what? Yeah. Accidentally? Um, that's the part I'm trying to find. I, just, I read the whole story. I tried to look up more. I can't find out. Was they this like won't idiocracy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually supposed to be getting out of jail today. Oh, go ahead. Oh, dumbass, you're in the wrong line. Yeah, uh, he uh, <laughs> he accidentally was released from jail. And now they're back out on a manhunt looking for him. <laughs> and, and, you know, it made me smile a little bit because it was not in Florida. Hell, it was not even in the United States. This happened in Quebec. I've been to Quebec. I have not been to Quebec. I've been to Ontario. Yeah, Montreal is a beautiful place. I've heard. I've seen pictures. It's like an amazing European city in the middle of North America. Yeah. Go there someday. Best I probably strippers will. ever. Do what? Best strippers. Really? Really. Yeah, uh, it's it's interesting, too. You can go to Canada and get full nude strip club and have alcohol at the same place. Because yeah. they're Canadians, eh? Something Canadians do right. Uh, but they're sorry about it. Oh, uh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> next. <laughs> uh, my next story here. I, I thought this was interesting. Uh, Taylor Swift is getting into the porn industry. Yeah. I don't have anything. Nothing? Taylor Swift? Yeah. Um, well, along with Microsoft, they are out there buying up all the dot .porn, dot .sucks, and dot .adult domains. So that way they cannot be used for anything else in the future. Yeah. They're just going out there buying all these uh, domains so that somebody can't go out and then purchase uh, Taylor Swift nude porn or something like that. Oh, oh, That's... just of, okay, of them. Yeah. Oh, well, it's not just of them. Well, who There's would multiples. go to Microsoft porn? I, I don't know. That's that would thing. be the word. <laughs> all floppy all the time. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I'll show you my hard drive. I thought they were. They were. Uh... Nope. It's um. You want to play with my dongle? Yeah, it it, uh, it all has to do with. Uh, let's see the 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 best quote I could find really was they're trying to pull the rug out from underneath any possible trolls. That that was the quote that was on this article. Okay, well you made it sound like they're buying up, you know, everything dot porn and everything dot. Suck. They're buying up everything that they can. It's not just Taylor Swift dot whatever. It's or Microsoft dot adult or whatever. They're buying up. There's a there's a list of stuff that they're buying up. Um, I mean, Taylor Swift, I can see being an idiot, but has Microsoft never heard Rule 34? You know Rule 34. Yeah, if you can imagine it, there's porn of it. That's true. I, I my favorite example is someone was like Rule 34 shopping carts. I dare you. Somebody did it. It was just a picture of a line of shopping carts and just said gang bang. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It was. Now, uh, 
Now, I don't know if you heard about this. So a little while back, you know, Taylor Swift has also gone on a, uh, a rampage of trying to what's the right word I'm looking for? Um, Bother? No. Annoy? No. Harass? No. Annoy? No. Bother? No. I don't know that. She's trying to buy uh, rights. Um, God damn it! What's the word I'm looking for? Bother? Huh? She's trying to trademark specific phrases. Um, as well, the only one I can think of off the top of my head, uh, was these sick beats. She's trying to trademark stuff like that particular phrase, it's these sick beats, so people can't use them in their songs and their music. That's the point. And this happened a while back. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is because the reason that I brought up this story. Taylor Swift is, I'm guessing, going out. I, I When I first read this, I thought it was like an investment thing. She's buying porn sites... She's going to make money? Dude, you own, you have the money to buy a porn site? Fucking do it, because you're going to make money. Well, see, I would think that she was doing one of those, uh, I'm not sure, exactly sure what it's called, but where you buy up a domain name before somebody else has a chance to get to it. That's what it, that's what it is that she's doing. Yeah, but then trying to sell it to people. I, I have a website that I won't plug here, but I bought the .com of it. And then somebody swooped in and bought the .net and the .info and the .org uh, and then tried to sell them to me. Now, the domain I bought was around $12 per year. They're like, oh, for 150 bucks, you can have the .org and the .net. It's like, if I wanted that shit, I would have bought it for 12 bucks a week ago. But That's what it seems like she's doing here, though. She's just trying to buy all this stuff out before it can be used from somebody else. But she's, just, she's putting her foot in the way too much shit lately. You know, and, and There's she, porn of that. She needs to shut her mouth. There's porn of that. Next story. Groom knocks bride out at mother's request. Whose mother? His mother. His mother told him, uh, this is uh, an Egyptian... I don't like her. Knock her out. No, no, this is an Egyptian groom. Um, the mother said that by hitting the woman, the wife, as soon as they were married, would help the control so the wife would not take over anything in the marriage. It would all still be man dominance. The, the mo- his mother said this to him. Oh, so they're, you know, Egypt, um, I, I have to assume they're, they're Muslims. Yeah, uh, which, as we all know, is is an amazingly pro woman oh, culture. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna read you a couple quotes here. Okay. My mother said this would help me control my wife throughout our mar- our marital life. She warned me that my brothers are controlled by their wives because they didn't listen to her and hit their brides. He said this according to the news network that was interviewing him. After I slapped her, she hit me back. <laughs> I then ran to the kitchen and brought a metal bar, which I used to hit her on the head and body. What a fuckwit. So police arrested him on charges of causing serious injuries to his wife, who I guess suffered fractures in her skull and pelvis. What a... Yeah. Did he hit her again, or did he hit her so hard on the head that she fractured her pelvis? Yeah, he hit her multiple times. What a fucking asshole. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, they always say listen to your mom, but you might want to think before you do something like that. And I have exciting news. Florida man? Yeah. Now in liquid form. What did he do? Fall into a fucking industrial blender or something? No, no, it's 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 not that good. Uh it's it's anybody that likes beer. Cigar City Brewery, which is located in Tampa. I've actually been to the brewery and gotten to taste some of their, their small brews. Okay. Pretty good stuff. Uh they have made a Florida man brew. A Florida man brew. Yes. Um, what is it? Does it taste like you know cigarette butts and stupid? <laughs> um, uh, Cigar City Brewing will only make a small batch of this special beer. Three thousand bottles at nine dollars each uh, will only be av- available to certain Florida retail locations. Um, let's see here. Where is my the? Oh, basically, this was derived from Florida Man being uh, top news stories. It says they've it's become so popular across the internet that the Tampa Craft Brewing Company Cigar City has decided to use the viral ph- phenomenon to create a new Florida Man brew. And it is where is what did it taste like? Oh, okay, it's like ashtrays and stupid. No, nah, um, no, actually, it is. Let's see here. Founder of the brewing company, Joey Redner, described the Indian Pale Ale as crazy hoppy, detailing it has a bright citrusy hop character with hints of apricot, peach, orange, pine, lemon on a solid malt background. I'm not a big fan of IPAs. I don't know about you. Oh, I'm not a beer person. That's right. 
I'm not a citrus person either. I do like citrus. I know. You'll eat a pineapple until your mouth rots. Yes. Um, we had this discussion. Yes. There is one thing I don't like, though, is grapefruit. And I do know a couple people that tried this this beer um, shit, it was just a few days ago. And I did not taste it. They both told me it has a very heavy grapefruit flavor. There is no way I'm trying that. But it'd be kind of cool to buy a bottle just to have it, have the logo, you know. I want to go ahead and put a call out to any of our listeners. If you buy us a bottle of Florida Man, I'll make Mike drink it. I was going to say we'll mention you in our next episode, but... We'll mention you in our next episode. Then I'll make Mike drink it. So you're trying to tell me that's going to be my, my drink of the week? Uh, it's up to the listeners at this point. Ugh. It really doesn't sound good. I'll drink it with you. Will you really? If somebody buys a bottle of Florida Man for us, I'll drink it with you. We'll split it in half, and I'll drink it. The whole half? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm down for that, then. If you'll do it, I'll do it. Whew. It can't be you. No, I won't and buy it. It can't be you. <laughs> she was thinking about it. I know. I know. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I'm not going to buy it. Are you kidding me? All right, and our final story of the week. Um, electrocuted man hit by motorcycles in Melbourne. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Electrocuted man hit by motorcycles. Uh, actually, the electrocuted the the man that was apparently electrocuted was hit by two motorcycles. So, so the uh, a guy was electrocuted and then hit by two motorcycles. Yes. Is this how Florida's executing people now? I hope so. I would love to watch that. <laughs> they, they need to make just a TV show of that. All right. Just. Bzz, boom, boom. Next. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess this man was a driver of a utility truck. This was uh, in. South Harbor City Boulevard in Melbourne. So, yeah, here in Florida. Um, the police say that the large boom on top of the truck struck overhead power lines as the driver drove northbound, which caused the power lines to break away from the poles. The downed power lines then fell across both lanes of the South Harbor City Boulevard, and according to the police, the driver of the truck then exited the vehicle and attempted to pick up the energized lines without any safety gear. What a moron. The driver was immediately electrocuted and propelled across the roadway into oncoming southbound traffic when two Harley-Davidson motorcycles ran his ass over. <laughs> well, that's a shocking story, Mike. Oh. Yeah. Police say the motorcyclists will be facing no charges. Oh. But the man is grounded. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good. Um, actually, the police say that no charges will be filed in this case, and the investigation is still ongoing. <laughs> what is there to continue? We had this same ongoing investigation with the mattress thing last week. What? What is <laughs> the there? investigation? Is this? He did. <laughs> good luck with the investigation, guys. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to check back next week and see how this turns out. <laughs> 